There were once some very strange dinosaurs that roamed our planet. Creatures such as the bizarre Therizinosaurs, the winged Ichi, and the small dome-headed Stegoceras are all weird animals in their own ways, but in 2016 it was discovered that a particular species of Ankylosaur was potentially one of the weirdest. Liaoningosaurus paradoxus was, as you can tell by its name, a very unusual dinosaur. This species had actually been known about since 2001, when paleontologists originally described the first known specimen belonging to this animal, which originated from the Lower Cretaceous of northeastern China. The fossil remains of the creature were very small, at around just 34cm long, or 13 inches, and it displayed some fairly odd characteristics for an ankylosaur. These features include the presence of certain holes in the skull and mandible, relatively long lower legs with sharp claws on the end of the feet, armour on the back that didn't have many protruding structures, some very peculiar teeth, and what has been interpreted as two plates of bone that cover the entire underside of the organism. These bits of preserved anatomy, in addition to the small size and the fact that many of the fossil bones were unfused, resulted in the original describers concluding that this specimen represented a juvenile individual. So, back in 2001, not much was made of this animal. The traits it displayed did make its classification a bit confusing, hence the species name, but it was placed as an early type of nodosaurid. Things were going to get a lot stranger though. Since 2001, some new developments have occurred, as 2016 saw the publication of a description of a second specimen of Liaoningosaurus paradoxus. This fossil also originated from the same rocks as the first, the Lower Cretaceous Age Yixian Formation in China. This specimen had a bit of a surprise to it, however. Not only was there an ankylosaur here, but within the ribcage of the organism there were also some fish. The paleontologists who described this second specimen therefore used the presence of fish in the body cavity of the animal as evidence that Liaoningosaurus was actually an aquatic, or at least semi-aquatic, ankylosaur. The authors did also consider the possibilities that the fish were already there before the dinosaur died, or that they had been scavenging the animal's carcass and then got buried with it, but concluded that they were more likely gut contents. The researchers then pointed out several of the other characteristics of Liaoningosaurus that they interpreted as potentially indicative of a semi-aquatic lifestyle. The unfused bones, they said, specifically in the hip region, could have been an adaptation to swimming and not because the animal wasn't fully grown. Additionally, the armoured plates on the underside of the body, which are apparently unique to this species, could have been defence against attack from below in the water and the paper cited the sharp claws on the feet as adaptations to carnivory. The unusual teeth, too, were proposed to be evidence of fish-eating, as their comb-like structure is different to other ankylosaurs and perhaps could have aided in their alternative diet. Strangely, though, it states in the paper that these two specimens of Liaoningosaurus are far from the only ones known. In fact, there are allegedly hundreds of specimens that have been collected from this formation, all of which are less than half a metre in length. The paleontologists state that this adds to the evidence for these animals being adults, and that they must have just been a particularly small species. Of course, there are issues with the conclusions reached in the 2016 paper, and the evidence provided for those conclusions is perhaps not as good as it needs to be. It's been pointed out by other paleontologists that the overall body plan of Liaoningosaurus doesn't really seem like it would have been a good swimmer. For example, the feet and the hands are relatively quite small, and don't appear to have been able to function like paddles. Additionally, the tail likely would not be useful for propulsion through water, as it is short and not very thick. And although it's been inferred that this creature could have converged with turtles as far as its aquatic tendencies go, its neck bones and skull do not display the adaptations associated with the lifestyle of these other animals. The identity of the plating on the underside as actual bone has been brought into question before too, since a 2013 study that examined the structure of the plates found that there was no indication they were composed of bone, and it was probably preserved skin. This would discount the proposal that Liaoningosaurus had bony armouring on the underside to protect from attacks coming from deeper in the water. Finally, other paleontologists have also cautioned that there is currently no way to absolutely prove that the fragmentary fish skeletons located in the second specimen were actually part of the gut contents, as the paper states. 
While this is a possibility, the prospect that some sort of transportation after death had occurred to position the fish as they were should probably not be so easily dismissed, as it is more difficult than the paper might have suggested to prove definitively that an item is a part of the gut contents. Alternatively, perhaps Liaoningosaurus was not a fully aquatic ankylosaur that actively swam after fish, but a shore-dwelling organism that occasionally fed on fish if it had the chance. Or, maybe this individual is the only one to have consumed this type of food, in which case perhaps it was an accident. Clearly, more research is needed to clarify a few things. This shouldn't be too difficult to do if it's true that hundreds of specimens are known, and hopefully within the next few years we might end up seeing more papers on Liaoningosaurus being published, with more good evidence in support of the idea that this was a small, fish-eating, aquatic ankylosaur. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you'd like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.